Welcome to the world of 18xx. Learning to play an 18xx game from a rule book can be quite intimidating. 1861-1867 comes with a quick start manual. We will be using this quick start manual to set up the board and play through the example. This will give you an idea of how to play 1861. If you're an experienced 18xx player, you may just want to skip to the example play. I have it time stamped in the description. I'm Joe Leon. Let's play with some trains. This is a double-sided map where companies will operate. Like many of the included components, one side is used for playing 1861 and the other for 1867. Tractiles will be placed on the map to build routes for trains to run on. Tractiles will be able to upgrade as the game progresses, creating more connections and improving the value of cities. Let's take a closer look at the map. Here you can see some track tiles, a station token, and a upgraded city. The little black dots represent towns or very small stations. We'll refer to them as towns in this video. There are also off-board locations whose value change as the game progresses. Some hexes have a terrain cost. This is money the company must spend to build there. The stock market is where the value of the company is tracked during the game. There are two options to play with, the grid market and the column market. We'll be using the column market for the example play. Company tokens will be placed on the stock market, which represent their current value. When a company does something that increases or decreases its stocks, the token will move. A charter represents a company. Any assets that belong to a company are placed on top of its charter and are only owned by the company, not the player. The game starts with minor companies which will eventually be used to form major companies. Stock certificates represent ownership in companies. Minor companies are represented by one certificate, while major companies are represented by multiple certificates. Trains will be purchased by companies and used to generate revenue by running routes that connect various towns, cities, and off-board locations on the map. Private companies. You can imagine these as companies that are so small they only operate within a single hex of the map. Instead of going through the operating steps, a private company pays a fixed revenue at the beginning of the operating round. The game will start with a one-time private company auction and then will cycle through stock rounds, operating rounds, and merger rounds in a set order until the game end triggers. Stock Rounds. Players will use their money to start or invest in companies. At the beginning of the game, they will only be able to start minor companies in the stock round. As the game progresses, they will be able also start or invest in major companies. Operating Rounds. Players will operate companies on the map to earn revenue. Companies will lay and upgrade track, purchase trains, and then use those trains to run routes for revenue. During the merger rounds, players will have the opportunity to upgrade their minor companies into major companies. Trains and Game Phases Each train has a large number in the upper left corner. Trains are grouped by this number to form a rank. When purchasing trains, only the lowest rank is available. So in order to purchase a three train, all two trains must first be purchased. The game is broken up into phases. The game phase will affect rules such as what tiles are available how many trains a company may hold, or when trains will be removed from play due to being obsolete, better known as rusting. A phase change happens when the first train of a new rank is purchased. As train technology moves forward, older models become obsolete. A train rank will rust when a train that is twice its number value is purchased. For example, the purchase of the first four train rusts all the two trains. When a train rusts, it's immediately removed from play. Train rank 5 or higher do not rust and are considered permanent. Companies will use trains to run routes to generate revenue. The large number on a train indicates how many revenue centers, 
cities, towns, or off-board locations, it can count on its route. The revenue generated is the sum of the values each train can run to without reusing track. Towns may be skipped. The company NW has two train and a three train. The two train runs for a total of $90. The small town of Tavir can be skipped to increase income, but its value is not included. The three train is able to service three cities for a total of $110. The only way money can be transferred between companies is by purchasing trains. As a result, a critical aspect of 18xx games, especially 1861-1867, is buying trains between companies, known as train shuffling. If a player controls both companies in the transaction, they can set whatever price they want for a train, at least $1. This allows players to manipulate where the money or trains end up, which can then be used to orchestrate game-winning maneuvers. The National Railway has its own charter, but is not a company players may own. Instead, the National Railway is an automated player that will purchase trains and absorb companies from players through nationalization. Nationalization happens when a company is insolvent. This is usually when a company does not own a train and cannot afford one. The player will sell their company to the National Railway at a discounted price. In 18xx, you are first and foremost an investor. Even though you will be operating companies, your end score is determined by how valuable your portfolio is, so be sure to keep that as your primary focus. Organize your tableau of stock certificates so you can clearly track your ownership of various companies in play. 18xx games are known for taking a long time to play. While it is true, 18xx games on an average take longer to play than most Euro-style games, a large reason they take so long is that players are not actively advancing the game by purchasing trains. A good rule of thumb for beginners is to purchase trains as often as possible, even if that means your existing trains will rust or your companies will nationalize. This will keep players on their toes and will likely make for a more exciting game. If you are new to 18xx, prior to playing your first game it is recommended that you use the quick start manual to play through the example of play. That is what I'll be doing in the rest of this video. On page 26 of the main rulebook is the 1861 short variant. The example of play has a setting up in accordance with this variant. We're going to start by giving each player $40 cash. We have four bundles. Bundle 1 contains Private 5, the end company with $165, and a bonus cash of $20. Player 1 is also given the priority bear. Bundle 2 has Private 2, the SPW with $120 cash, the RO with $100 cash, and a bonus of $10 for the player. Bundle 3 contains Private 1, the MK with $140, the KR with $100, and $5 bonus for the player. And Bundle 4, which contains Private 3, Private 4, the MNN with $130. A minor company's stock price is set to half the amount that is placed on its treasury, rounded down. When a token is placed in a space that already can has tokens, the new token is placed below. This is how your stock market should look. Dealing out the assets in this way lets us skip the private company auction and the first stock round. Play will begin with the first operating round. Operating round 1.1 of 2. Pay the privates. Private companies, player 1 receives $30 for P5. Player 2 receives $15 for P2. Player 3 receives $10 for P1. And player 4 receives $45 for P3 and P4. During the stock round, the companies will operate in order of their value. In this case, company N will go first. N operates. It can build no track. It does not have a train to run, so it pays no dividends. 
its stock price will drop to 70 and it's able to purchase a two train for $100. The MK operates. We're going to lay a straight town on hex H10 and then it's going to pay $20 to lay an additional track on H12. Again, it has no trains to run, cannot pay dividends, its stock price falls back, it also buys a two train. The NNN lays a gentle curve at I-7. It does not run trains, pays no dividends. Its stock price drops to 60 and it buys a 2 train for $100. The SPW operates. It lays a tight town, B8, pays $20 to lay a gentle track, B6. It does not run trains, pays no dividends, its stock price drops to 55 and then it purchases a 2 train for $100. The RO operates. It lays a gentle Y city on B4, pays $20 to lay straight track on D6. It does not run trains, it pays no dividends, its stock price drops to 45. This company cannot afford to buy a 2 train from a bank, so it must take a $50 loan. $45 goes into the treasury, $5 is used to pay for interest. Then it purchases a two train from the bank for $100. It also purchases a train from its sister company for $1. A little train shuffling happening here. The KR Major operates. companies would normally operate it lays after a gentle Y city at G15, but none have been formed yet. It pays $20 to lay the straight the National track Railway at F14. Would then operate after all major trains. It pays but no this dividends. Only happens in Talk phases drops four to 45. Through seven. It cannot afford this is the status of our stock so takes market a and is start operating its treasury and purchases B. a two train for $100. It also purchases the true two train from MK for $5. Major companies would normally operate after minor companies, but none have been formed yet. The National Railway would then operate after all companies, but only in phases 4 through 7. The merger round is skipped until phase 3. Operating round 1B. Pay the private companies. Player 1 receives $30 for P5. Player 2 receives $15 for P2. Player 3 receives $10 for P1. Player 4 receives $45 for P3 and P4. N operates. N can lay no track. He runs his 2 train for $80. 40, skip to town, and 40 is $80. It pays half, 40 to N company, 40 to player 1. The stock price increases to 80, and it does not purchase a train. The MK operates. It lays gentle track at H14. Does not run trains, it pays no dividend, and the stock price once again drops to 60. The MK cannot afford a two train, so it takes two loans, adding $90 to the treasury and purchasing a two train for $100. MNN operates, lays gentle track at J8, runs a two train for $70, half pays $35 to the company, $35 to the player, the stock price goes up to $65, and it does not purchase a train. The SPW operates, it lays no track, does not run trains, can pay no dividends. Stock price drops down to $50. Even with the maximum number of loans, SPW cannot afford a train, so it is nationalized. The stock price drops to $45 for being nationalized. Player 2 receives $90 for his two shares. All SPW assets are transferred to the RSR. SPW station tokens is replaced with the RSR station token. All SPW components are removed from play. The RO operates. Lays a gentle track E7, pays $20 to lay a tight city at E9. Runs his two train for $70 and another two train for $50. For 30, skip the town, 
20 more is 50, and then 30, skip the town, 40 more. He pays half to the company and half to himself. The stock price goes up to 50. Now he pays $5 loan interest and then decides to pay off the $50 loan. He does not purchase a train. The KR operates. He lays a gentle town at E13. Runs a two train for 60. Runs a second two train for 70. Half pays. $65 to the company, $65 to the player. The stock price increases to 50. He pays his $5 loan interest and then pays off the $50 loan. He does not purchase a train. Merger Round 1B. This is skipped until Phase 3 is activated. We now move to the stock round. Stock Round 2. Player 1 puts KK up for auction starting at 160. Player 2 bids 230 and wins the auction since all other players are forced to pass. The $230 bid is placed on KK's charter. KK's stock price is set to 110 and the KK station token is placed on its home station. Player 3 puts up KB for auction starting at 130. Player 4 raises the bid to 140. Player 1 raises it to 160. Player 2, 3, and 4 Pass. $160 is placed on KB's charter. KB's stock price is set to 80, one half the bid, and KB's station token is placed on the home station. Player 2 is forced to pass because she has no money left. Player 3 puts up OK for auction, starting at 130. Players 4, 1, and 2 Pass. $130 is placed on OK's charter. OK's stock price is set to 65 and OK's station token is placed at the home station. Player 4 puts up MV for auction starting at 120. Player 1, 2, and 3 pass. The $120 bid is placed on MV's charter. MV's stock price is set to 60. An MV's station token is placed at its home station. All players are forced to pass, and priority deal goes to player 1 since player 4 took the last action. They pass because no more legal actions remain. Green miner companies cannot be started until phase 3, and even if there were miner companies available, no player has $100 and not able to put any up for auction. This is the state of the stock market at the end of stock round 2. Operating round 2.1 Paying of the private companies is the first thing that happened. Player 1 receives $30 for P5. Player 2 receives $15 for P2. Player 3 receives $10 for P1. Player 4 receives $45 for P3 and 4. Now the minor companies run. The KK is the first to operate. It lays no track, does not run trains, it pays no dividends. Stock price drops to 100. Purchases a two train from the RO for $230. Purchasing the two train from RO means it will not be able to run this operating round. However, player two did this to move money to a company that would operate later. This is because player two predicted that they could buy a three train if the other players purchased the remaining twos. The N operates. It still cannot lay track. It runs its two train for $80, pays half 40 to the company and 40 to the player. Its stock price moves up to 90. It does not purchase a train. The KB operates. It's going to lay a straight track on C13. It does not run any trains. It pays no dividends, stock price drops to 70, 
and it purchases a two train for $100. The MNN operates next. It lays a straight track at L8, runs its two train for $70. $35 to the company, $35 to the player. The stock price increases to $70, and it does not purchase the train. The OK operates, lays a gentle Y city at D20, pays $20 to lay an additional straight track at D18. It does not run trains, it pays no dividends, the stock price decreases to $60, and then it purchases a two train for $100. The MK is the next to operate. It lays no track, it runs a two train for $70. Pays $35 to the company, $35 to the player. Its stock price goes up to $65. Pays $10 in loan interest and then repays one loan for $50. It does not purchase a train. MV operates. It lays a gentle city at I-13. Pays $20 to lay a straight track at I-11. It does not have a train to run, so it pays no dividends. The stock price drops to $55. It purchases a two train for $100. The RO operates, laying a gentle track at F8. It runs a two train for $70, pays half, $35 to the company, $35 to the player. Its stock price rises to $55, and then it purchases a three train for $225 immediately triggering a phase change. The KR operates, upgrading its home since we're in the green phase or phase three. It runs a two train for $80 and runs a second two train for $70. It pays out half, $75 to the company, $75 to the player. Its stock price rises to 55, but it does not purchase a train. Merger Round 2. Although some companies are eligible to convert or merge, all companies decline to. Play continues with the next operating round. Pay the Privates. The KK operates. He upgrades Kiev, D14. Runs a two train for $80. Paying half to the company and half to the player. Stock price goes up to 110 but he does not purchase a train. The N operates. He upgrades Moscow, H8, runs a two train for $90, pays half to himself and half to the company. The stock price rises to $100 and he does not purchase a train. The KB operates. He lays a straight track to B12, connecting to the offboard. He runs his two train for $80, paying half to himself and half to the company. Stock price goes to $80. He does not purchase a train. Since we are in phase three, he is now purchases his private number five from the player for 90. The MNN operates. It lays a gentle curve at I-9 connecting to Moscow. It runs its two train for $80. Half goes to the company, half to the player. Stock price goes up to $80. It does not purchase a train. It is able to purchase privates 3 and 4 for $135. The MK is next. It lays a gentle track G9. Runs the trains for $90. Stock price goes up to $70. It pays the $5 loan interest and then purchases private 1 from player 3 for $30. It does not purchase a train. The OK operates. It lays a straight track at D16, takes one loan, adding $45 to the company treasury, and pays $20 to upgrade Odessa, D20. It runs a two train for $80, half pays $40 to the company and $40 to the player. The stock price goes to $65. It does not purchase a train. MV operates, upgrading its home city with a KTAL, I-13. It runs a two train for $80, it 
stock price goes to 60 it does not purchase the train. The RO operates. Upgrades its home at B4. Runs a 2 train for 80. Runs a 3 train for 110. Half pays. Stock price moves up to 60. It does not purchase a train. It does, however, purchase private number 2 from player 2 for $45. The last company to operate is the KR. It upgrades the town to a chicken foot at H10. It runs a train for 80 and it runs another 2 train for 90. Half pays. The stock price goes to 60 but it does not purchase a train. The merger round. Players turn minor companies into major companies. During phases 3 to 7, a merger round happens after each operating round. In a merger round, each eligible minor company in descending price order is given the opportunity to convert or merge. A minor company is eligible to convert to a major company if its stock token is in the blue zone of the stock market, 100 to 165. The KK converts into the major company MKN. All money, trains, private companies, and loans are transferred from KK to the MKN charter. KK stock token is replaced with the MKN stock token. The station token is replaced with the MKN's free station token. All MKN certificates are placed on the charter. Player 2 exchanges the KK Minor Certificate for the PKN President Certificate. The president of the newly formed major company may now purchase shares at the stock price up to the maximum allowed of 60%. Then, proceeding clockwise, each player may purchase one 10% share. All money from sold shares is added to the treasury of the major company. The N company declines to merge or convert. The MNN merges with MV to form the GR major company. All money, trains, private companies, and loans are transferred from the minor companies to the major company charter. The major companies Stock price is the sum of the lowest and highest value minor companies involved in the merge, rounded down. The two minor company station tokens are replaced with the major company token. All of GR certificates are placed on the charter. Player 4 exchanges both of his minor company certificates for the major company president certificate. Player 4 purchases two shares from the charter adding $270 to the treasury. Player 1, Player 2, Player 3 decline to purchase a share. All remaining companies decline to convert or merge. This is the end of the scripted playthrough. 1961S variant is a great way to start with new players. It removes the pressure of the initial auction and gives them a direction to go with their companies. To learn more about 18xx games in general, Train Shuffling is a wonderful podcast and YouTube channel. Johnny and Eric do some interesting things and have great discussions and playthroughs. Wheel Tapping podcast and YouTube. Lots of live playthroughs and good information. Tony and Chris have some great guests, but just as a hint, never own two shares of Tony's company. I hear the conductor. That means it's time to go. If you enjoyed the video, leave me a like and a comment. Until next time, have fun training.